Also joining us right now is Mohammed Amin. He's the former chair of the Conservative Muslim Forum. Thank you so much for joining us, Mohammed. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, uh, just, I just want to ask you first, we've described what, what read out the full new definition that comes into force this Thursday of extremism. Are you happy with that new definition? Are you happy with who is going to decide who, which organisations, which individuals come under that uh, definition? I think it suffers from vagueness. The definition that the government has been using since 2011, which is set out in its 2011 Prevent Review, and I've spoken and written in favour of Prevent on many occasions, has worked. If you're going to have a new definition, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a new definition. It needs to be agreed across the political spectrum. It's no good having the Conservative Party wanting a definition if the other political parties don't support it. Right now, we've got a situation where the Archbishops of Canterbury, York, don't like this new definition. The former reviewer of it, uh, independent review of terrorism legislation, Lord David Anderson, doesn't like it. I understand the present reviewer of terrorism legislation doesn't like it either. A definition which Michael Gove's like, Gove likes and other people don't isn't yeah. going to work. No, that's it. We do need to all agree on it. And that's part of the problem, isn't it? It has become politicised, this. And isn't that where you get into an issue of someone talking about intolerance and hatred? We know what violence is. We've already got laws about you know, people either committing violence or inciting violence. Those are really clear. When we get into hate speech territory, when we get into intolerance, I mean, you know... It, it, 20 different people could come up with 30 different answers about who they think is, um, you know, is hateful or intolerant, couldn't they? Well, Michael Gove, what he should have done was actually put out a draft definition for consultation. But he has a habit of believing that only Michael Gove knows <laughs> and everybody else in the world is wrong. He's done this many times before on other things like the national curriculum, for example. The trouble well, is with anyone definition. making that definition, I don't think you're going to get agreement between the Tories and the Labour Party or, or indeed uh, most of the people involved in this. You're not going to get agreement. And that is the fundamental issue, isn't it? Should we not have a definition of this? Should, uh, Julia, we, only have, should we only have laws and, 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 and government definitions when it concerns something that is either criminal or not criminal? Julia, I don't agree with you. I think you could sit down and get Rishi Sunak and... Keir Starmer to agree a definition of extremism if they wanted to talk about it. But it'd still uh, need to have an interpretation, you... wouldn't it? And it depends well, who does the interpretation. Well, the interpretation would initially be done by the government because this is about who government will talk to. Mm. But at least we could have a definition that was agreed between the parties if they wanted to try. Michael Gove doesn't want to try. He wants to use this for political purposes as a wedge issue because there's a general election coming up. OK. Um, now, we, we weren't entirely sure before Michael Gove stood up about whether or not he was going to name any particular organisations. We already have, you know, prescribed organisations, banned terrorist groups like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hamas and others. Uh, but uh, he has, Michael Gove, listed some extremist organisations that he says uh, are, are, are come under this, this definition of, you know, extremism. Uh, on the right, British National Socialist Movement... Um, that's Nazi, National Socialist is Nazi, and the Patriotic Alternative. Uh, he also is named the Muslim Association of Britain as a British Association of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, again, uh, again prescri another prescribed organisation. There was some fears from the Muslim Council of Britain and Cage International that they were going to be on the list. I don't know whether he's going to also list them or not, or whether they do go on the list eventually. Um, the, the, the organisations he has named there so far... Would you agree with those people being listed as extremists? Well, I'm not a great fan of the Muslim Association of Britain. I've never had very much to do with them. But I understand from memory that they are one of the affiliated organisations that is affiliated to the Muslim Council of Britain. Yeah. So is he and now going to say... about 500 of those organisations without affiliation. That's right. So is he going to say that if the Muslim Council of Britain has any organisations in its membership that he considers to be extreme, therefore it is also going to be designated as extreme. I mean, recently, Michael Gove has basically forced the interfaith network for the UK to shut down by cutting off government funding. And he's cut off that government funding because one of about 30 trustees is a Muslim called Hassan Judy, who was previously Deputy Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain. And as far as Gove is concerned, that's enough to taint the entire interfaith network for the UK 
which right. has been in operation for decades and basically cut off all government funding. That's how he behaves. Right. Uh, no love lost there, I think, between you and Michael Gove. Can I just ask you, just finally, uh, Mohammed, um, uh, there are lots of conversations about racism in the well, in Labour Party, uh, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia or anti-Muslim hatred, uh, I think it's more accurately described, in the Conservative Party. Do you think that the Conservative Party is, uh, suffers from anti-Muslim hatred? I don't believe that the Conservative Party as a party is a party that promotes anti-Muslim hatred. No, I don't. I also don't think the leadership of the Conservative Party promotes anti-Muslim hatred, although some people like Swella Braverman like to use very florid language which whips up division in our society. Amongst grassroots members of the Conservative Party, when you do proper polling, which you got did recently for the organisation Hope Not Hate, you do find disturbing levels of anti-Muslim prejudice amongst ordinary Conservative Party members. Such as? What sort of prejudice? Uh, people who think that Islam is a threat to our society, that there are too many Muslims in this country, that Muslims have too much influence. I have to dig the poll out to find the exact mm. questions that they were no, asking. No, no, I, I wouldn't expect but you to remember. If you hope not hate, they will tell you, you know, they've got a lot of detail about this poll on their website. Yeah, my, and I, I, I'm going to have a look at it, but I, I, I have some very big issues with Hope Not Hate, which I, I think is very much a hateful organisation, in my personal opinion, uh, in terms of what they try and do in trying to actually stamp out freedom of speech in this country. So, I, uh, But if it's an independent poll, I'll certainly take a look at it. Mohammed, I mean, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, he is the former chair of the Conservative Muslim Forum. Um, let me bring in uh, Philip Ingram, as I say, is a former a senior military intelligence officer on this um, really interesting conversation with both gentlemen mm. there. Um, Chris Phillips said look, the whole thing's a waste of time. Uh, Mohammed, I mean, criticism largely seems to be that, look, you know, you're not going to get everyone to agree on this definition, so that doesn't work. Well, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it. You know, the definitions that both um, our guests, and I know Chris very well, um, you do you go drinking with all of the guests? I've been, I've been drinking with Chris, yes. Um, a, a few. A few. <laughs> um, uh, not everyone drinks, of course. But, um, yeah, the, the, the definitions both of them have been focusing on are the, are the definitions of extremism. That's in our counter uh, our contest strategy. That's yeah. our counter terrorism strategy. That's linked to the the, you know, the counter terrorism bill and the counter, and, and our terrorism act. This is one level below that, and this is mm -hmm. taking that de the definition of extremism away from linking it automatically into terrorism, which is what happens at the moment, yeah. and, and making sure that our taxpayers' money is not doing anything that's going to undermine what we'd want as our simple freedoms in society. Okay. I think that's an important debate to have. Let's at least have the debate, absolutely.